What's up, y'all? This is DJ Kenny Parker, DJ and producer for Boogie Down Productions slash KRS-One. And today I'm back with another story. Today's story is a little different because it's a combination of a few stories I wanted to touch on. Today's topic is my man, Biz Marquis. Those of you that read my book, My Brother's Name is Kenny, knows about my deep and long-lasting relationship with Biz Marquis. But those of you that haven't picked up the book, I'll put a link in the description below. Over my many decades in the music business, I have met a lot of people. As a matter of fact, it would probably take most people maybe three lifetimes to interact with the amount of people I've interacted with over the years. And I can safely say, without a doubt, that I have never met or have ever heard anyone else mention anyone like Biz Marquis. He was truly a one-of-a-kind person in every way. The last time I had the opportunity to see Biz, we took a very funny picture together. A few months after that, I was talking to him on the phone like I normally would for hours at a time, and he invited me over to his house in Maryland to dig through his vast collection of records because he had some 45s that I didn't have that he was going to let me get. So I had planned to go out to Maryland to check him out, and then I heard he was in the hospital. And as we all know, after many months in the hospital, he succumbed to his illness. What a lot of people don't know about Biz is that one, he was the funniest person that I ever met in my entire life. Hands down. And Biz had a photographic memory. Biz could remember every single phone number of anyone who ever gave him their number dating back decades. He remembered every number and he remembered every record cover. Biz can tell you the original sample to damn near every record that's come out in hip hop in the past 40 years. Biz knew the sample, who sung it, what the picture on the cover looked like, everything. And he probably had it in his collection too. Biz had one of the most amazing record collections ever as well. Biz and I used to hang out a lot in the 80s and 90s. We used to travel all over the New York City tri-state area, going to carnivals, movie theaters, basketball games, the Apollo, anywhere where there's any kind of group of people and excitement. Biz was there. He loved people and he loved interacting with people. And I was always in the car with Biz right next to him riding shotgun all over the place. I remember one time we went to a carnival in New Jersey and this lady runs up to Biz and said, Biz Monkey, Biz Monkey, can you take a picture with my baby? And Biz was like, sure. So the lady hands Biz the baby. Biz took the baby, looked at the baby, the baby looked at Biz, and burst out crying. <laughs> Everybody fell out laughing. It was so funny. Even Biz had to laugh. That baby took one look at Biz and was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Hilarious. Anyway, I want to tell you guys two funny Biz Markey stories before I get into the real meat of this video. Story number one. One time I was chilling with Biz right by the Apollo on 125th Street in Harlem and the police pulled us over. <laughs> they come up to the window. Biz rolls down the window. The police says, license and registration, please. Biz goes... Come on, man. You know me. It's Biz. The police officer is just looking at him. Biz Markey then starts singing his hit record, Just a Friend, to the cop. You got what I need to the police officer. <laughs> I'm sitting in the passenger side dying laughing. The cop was just looking at Biz and just shaking his head. I don't know if he then recognized Biz or whatever, 
but he still gave Biz the ticket. Meanwhile, I couldn't stop laughing because I could not believe Biz sung just a friend to a random New York City police officer. Hilarious. Story number two. One time, me and Biz, once again, just us two, was at this nightclub in Patterson, New Jersey. Now, what a lot of people may not know is there's some parts of Patterson, New Jersey that's really rough. I didn't even know this. Anyway, we're chilling in the club. We had a good time. We're leaving the club. I look over to my right, and about a block away, there was a big brawl going on. I'm like, yo, anybody from the streets know that when there's a brawl, anything can happen. You can get hit with a stray, a stray fist that wasn't meant for you, or unfortunately, a stray bullet that wasn't meant for you. So my first reaction was, Yo, Biz, let's get the hell out of here before they get to where we are. Biz goes, relax, man. I'm Biz. Everybody knows me out here. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> we got this. You're Biz. We're chilling. The brawl is getting closer and closer and closer to us. We're chilling, not moving. As the brawl gets closer to where we're standing, this one guy is running down the block, running from a guy who was holding a baseball bat. Unfortunately, the guy who was running fell. The guy who was chasing him with the baseball bat ran up behind him and cracked him over his head with the bat. Pow! You can hear the crunch. Crunch and he cracked this dude's whole dome open with a bat. I said, oh, Biz, did you see that? And as I was turning to talk to Biz, he yelled at me, yo, let's go, and took off running. <laughs> I'm standing there like, oh, oh now you want to run? And I took off. Me and Biz hauled ass down the block and ran into some apartment building lobby and chilled there till all the commotion went past us. The whole time I'm sitting there looking at Biz, shaking my head like, I thought you was Biz. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, that was hilarious. Just two of dozens of ridiculous things that happened when I was with Biz. Maybe I'll tell y'all some more another time. Anyway, let's rewind back to 1986. Before I met Biz. Karis One's relationship with Biz Markie dates back to even before Karis One released The South Bronx. The South, South Bronx. They had both come up in the game around the same time. They were friends. They had mutual friends. They hung out together sometimes. They did shows together sometimes. Their crew, shout out to TJ Swan and shout out to my man Cool V and Boogie Down Productions were all tight. I wonder if you guys ever noticed that there was one person that's never mentioned in the BDP versus Juice Crew beef, and that's Biz Markey. Curiously, Biz Markey is the one Juice Crew member that was left out of the massive diss record, The Bridge Is Over. If y'all recall, Karis One went after Mr. Magic, who was the head of the Juice Crew and a radio personality on WBLS. He went after Marley Mall, who was the Juice Crew DJ and the top producer in the game at that time. He went after Roxanne Shantae, who was the queen of the Juice Crew. And he went after MC Shan, who was the lead MC of the Juice Crew and Marley Mall's protege. At that time, Cool G Rap had one song out called it's a demo. Although that song was produced by Marley Mall, at the time, I don't remember the Juice Crew going around announcing that Cool G Rap was an official member yet. I think he was still early in the game. Big Daddy Kane, who would later be a member of the Juice Crew, wasn't a Juice Crew member at that point. He wasn't even out. He was months away from dropping his debut record. However, Biz Marquis was not only an official Juice Crew member, but also had one of the biggest records in New York City at the time. Make the music with your mouth, Biz. Make the music with your mouth, Biz. 
in my opinion, that was the second hottest record in New York City at the time behind Eric B as president by Eric B and Rock Kim. In my opinion, the reason why Biz wasn't part of the Juice Crew versus BDP beef was one, Biz was universally liked by everyone. DJ Red Alert, who was down with BDP, played Biz's record every week on Kiss FM. Of course, he was down with the Juice Crew on WBLS. His record was on daytime radio at the time, which was a rare feat. Two, I believe, and I've heard Chris mention this not only to me, but in interviews, that his friendship with Biz Marquee was the reason why he didn't diss Biz and the bridge is over. He said he would never disrespect Biz Marquee because they were friends. And to this day, Chris has never involved Biz in any kind of disrespect. However, DJ Scott LaRock, the leader of Boogie Down Productions, was different. Scott was going at everybody. He didn't care how cool people were. Business was business. In 1987, a little while after The Bridge is Over came out, Scott LaRock recruited two brothers from the Bronx named Narkim and Akeem. One was an MC and one was a beatboxer. Scott LaRock took them in the studio and produced a record called You Can't Win which came out on B-Boy Records. This particular record was a diss to Biz Marquee. Ironically, I happened to be in the studio the day that they recorded that song. It was the first time I was ever in a recording studio, and I got to watch BDP record a few songs, one of them being this particular song, You Can't Win. Considering that they were on an independent label, it didn't take but a few weeks for the record to be released. However, the record didn't make any noise and is all but forgotten by 99% of hip hop. Me, being the curious person that I am, when I finally got to meet Biz and become friends with him a few years later, I asked him about the record. I asked Biz straight up. Did you ever hear that record that Scott put out with Narkim and Akeem? Biz said, yeah, I heard that record. And when I did, I immediately went to the studio and made an answer. It was called Nobody Beats the Biz. At the time when I asked the question, I didn't know, and I'm pretty sure most people didn't know, that Nobody Beats the Biz was an answer to You Can't Win. I also didn't know that Big Daddy Kane had some part in writing that song. Maybe one day Big Daddy Kane, if he chooses to, will give some clarity on the meaning of the song and did Biz give him any direction when he was writing. Anyway, I heard straight from Biz's mouth to my ears, that Nobody Beats the Biz was in part a response to Narkim and Akeem and Scott LaRock. Although most people weren't aware, Scott LaRock challenged Biz Marquis, and Biz Mark responded in historic fashion. Over the years, I've seen many, many people talk about the BDP versus Juice Crew beef, and everybody have different takes on it. But this one little nugget is always left out of the story, which I think is important. Thankfully, neither Biz Markey or Scott LaRock had any hard feelings afterwards, and it didn't affect the relationship between my family and Biz Markey. Like I said, Biz Markey and I became very good friends and hung out dozens of times. I'm even in the Just a Friend video chilling with Biz. Also, me, KRS-One, and Biz hung out together before, did shows together before. As a matter of fact, we did one of the most epic shows in both of our careers in the Apollo in 1992. BDP had a sold-out show in the Apollo, and as a special surprise guest, we brought out our boy, Biz Marquis. The crowd had no idea he was going to be there. 
he came out to the crazy song. I am the magnificent. He was doing the biz dance and everybody went crazy. Harris One and Biz Marquee proceeded to go song for song for over an hour. It was like a throwback version of Versus. The crowd went crazy. It was one of the greatest shows I had ever been a part of. And Biz always says it was the greatest show of his career. Anyway, that's my story for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Rest in peace to the late, great Scott LaRock of Boogie Down Productions. Rest in peace to my man, Biz Marquis. I love you. I miss you. We all miss you. Until we meet again, my friend. Peace.